Uh, welcome, uh, welcome back. Uh, welcome to the second day of our uh, webinar on uh, systematic reviews. I'm going to commence by well, starting to share the screen. I presume all of you can see what I have on screen in front of me. And uh, <clears throat> before I make any comments, do any of you have um, anything and anything to say or any questions remaining from the last um, webinar on Monday? I'm happy to take any comments or questions from that session just now. Well, while you're still thinking about the last session, I give you a reminder that we're talking about systematic reviews, which uh, are conducted in five different steps. The first step is framing the question. The next is searching the literature. The literature search is planned according to the question framed. Uh, the studies selected through the literature search are then subjected to data extraction. The extracted data are then synthesized. And then what does the extracted data mean? All of that is summarized. Uh, one way to do this summary is called grading. So these are the five steps. In today's uh, webinar, again, we are going to have 40 minute sessions with 20 minutes break in between. And uh, in the first session today, I'm going to talk about literature search. Ahead of telling you something about the literature search, Ahead of telling you something about the literature search, I'm going to give you a little bit of flavor about how systematic reviews and primary studies can all go together. Uh, okay, may I just check if the voice quality is coming across okay amongst participants? Please, could you let me know? There appears to be a little bit of a noise in, in, in my sound system. So Mark says that voice appears okay. So thank you for that feedback, uh, Mark. So here is a study that uh, commenced with the idea being conceived in 1996. It completed recruitment of the 500 patients required to be randomized in 2006 and was published three years later after follow-up was completed and analysis was carried out. Uh, this is not untypical of a large multi-center trial. Ahead of the first patients being recruited into this study, um, myself and other colleagues who were planning this study had examined all the literature on the subject and uh, <clears throat> around the same time as we submitted for ethics approval, uh, we also submitted for publication a systematic review and this was published in due course. During the course of this recruitment of the patients, uh, another systematic review was published by the Cochrane Collaboration on the same topic a few years later. The systematic review was updated and, uh, the, and, and republished. Uh, this was before recruitment finished. Uh, 
A further review was published as follow-up was being completed. And ultimately after publication of this trial, an updated review, this time with individual patient data meta-analysis was published. So you can see that alongside a primary study, uh, there can be a series of systematic reviews published. The idea is to encourage you to think about your own work in your uh, doctoral program where you are very likely going to undertake a primary study where you're collecting data directly from patients or using data collected directly from patients. And to remind you that alongside it, do you have the opportunity to publish systematic reviews? I believe from uh, your program director, Matej, that you are expected to publish or undertake a systematic review alongside your own thesis work. At this point, I'd like to take you forward um, to conducting a search for conducting a search, the first step is to re-examine your research question. Um, in order to take you through an example, we'll first uh, look at a little bit of an outline of how we think about conducting a search. So here we are. We have our research question. The research question may have various components. In this example, we have population or participants. Uh, the review is about the accuracy of a test or a series of tests. The things of the results of this test are compared with a reference standard test and the study design for this type of question is called a test accuracy study. So to construct the search for this type of a question, we look at the population and the various tests and we create search terms for it and this a uh, circle here in blue or green on your screen possibly shows the citations covered by uh, the terms uh, in various databases. And here are various tests. All of those tests are combined together using the term or and the set of terms that includes all the tests combined with the term using and with population. So this is the general idea. And we'll cover details of this in a second. But remember, there is not just one database to cover you have to carry out this type of a search term combination for each of the different databases that are relevant to your subject. Here, I show example of at least uh, four, uh, Medline, Embase, Sinhal, and uh, Cochrane Library. Google Scholar is a search engine in addition once you have selected the studies, you will need also to look at the reference lists of the studies you have selected for inclusion in your review. If the journals that are relevant to your work are not included in any of these databases, then some of those, then those journals you would need to identify and manually search them. This type of search may not necessarily these days involve going to the library and physically identifying the journal sitting in a shelf. <clears throat> it may involve searching the web pages of a journal that may exist on the web 
but is not captured inside these databases that you systematically search. And then searching the gray literature, for example, doctoral thesis or conference abstracts. <coughs> this is uh, another challenge. And finally, you may have to contact authors directly, seeking them to give you information about any citations they know which have not been captured by your own search. So carrying out the second step of a systematic review, which is to carry out your literature search is not something you can do in one afternoon. It is quite a time consuming step. It requires a strategy and it is this strategies that allows you to succeed in capturing as many of the relevant uh, citations and papers as there are that cover your research question. And before you jump into searching for primary studies, for inclusion in your planned review, search for existing reviews. I'll come back to cover this uh, in the second uh, part of uh, today, where we will look at how existing reviews need to be evaluated in order to look at whether or not your own review is required. So you will remember from yesterday that uh, we examined the title Tests for Predicting Complications of Preeclampsia Protocol for a Systematic Review. Here is a table taken from this published protocol of uh, this planned review. In this planned review, the population, the structured question has the population, pregnant women with preeclampsia. The tests are the various pieces of information we collect from history and examination and tests in the form of uh, blood chemistry, ultrasound and uh, hematology. And the outcome of interest is complications of uh, preeclampsia, which are maternal and fetal as listed here. And the design of studies that we need, that we wish to include in this uh, systematic review are test accuracy studies. So before I proceed, I just put back to you the question of whether you understand this structured question that is in front of you on your slides taken from this published protocol of a systematic review. Please uh, write in the chat or unmute your microphone to say what you want to ask or make a comment. Does anybody feel that there is a need for me to remind you about how a question is structured? Okay, so Mitya says that uh, he, he understood um, and I have explained. So I presume from this comment that uh, based on, ah, and uh, Sylvia says, yes, please. Sylvia, I didn't understand 
by yes please do you want me to repeat something or do you mean you have understood please could you say that if you are un by unmuting your microphone uh, Sylvia you say there is no need to re-explain I can proceed is that what you mean okay so let's proceed then so here you can see that for the group of tests that exist, we need to construct a set of search terms or search term combination. And also for the outcome complications of preeclampsia, we may also need to, or we may need to consider constructing a search term combination. And finally, for the population, uh, the additional component of the structured question, we may need to search. So the steps are, we need to identify what are the relevant search terms. Mesh or medical subject heading is uh, a descriptor for indexing term used in the Medline database. But then there are also text terms because the indexing terms are not necessarily perfectly indexed. And then there is a question of understanding how and and or are used to combine the search terms. And then there is a search strategy. And in terms of writing the paper or the chapter concerning your systematic review, this information need to be summarized within an appendix and the findings of the search presented in figure one. So keep these things in mind as we proceed. The objective is that we can transparently provide what we have done in the method section, supported by additional information in appendix and a figure one in the results section. So here we take PubMed as an example. If you log into PubMed, you are able to save your searches. And uh, if necessary, I will aim to show you live some searches on one of your questions uh, that, that, that you may want to bring forward for consideration. So if you think about how PubMed works in the background, you have the chance to add all your search terms. And then you have also the chance to think about how you want to combine these terms using and or or. or item population within the structured question. All of these terms are combined using the, 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 the Boolean term or Boolean uh, <clears throat> uh, term or. Then a separate set of terms is created for tests and they are all combined with OR. And a term set is created for outcomes and they are all combined with OR. And in order to put all of this together, each of these sets is combined with AND. And this is how you get the final search term combination which can be further refined according to the number of citations you have obtained. We can return to this slide, uh, depending on how uh, this discussion pr progresses. But the point here is that this type of detailed information concerning how terms were identified and combined need to be summarized in somewhere in the paper, usually there isn't a space in the main manuscript. 
And this detail can be provided in Appendix 1. And Figure 1, which need to be presented in the results section, looks something like this. Here you have the terms for population combined with OR. And this number in this particular review exceeds 21,000. The term for tests combined with OR for history, examination, and other investigations altogether, you can see a very large number over there. And for outcome, again, very, very large number. But these terms are all combined with AND. And ultimately, after excluding animal studies and other such that are not relevant to our question, we have over 11,000 citations at the bottom of the figure. This information need to be presented as figure one in your published paper. So at this time, I'm going to take a little pause and leave for you to ask me any um, questions or any clarifications you wish uh, to address. Does it all sound too difficult or too complicated? Well, you, you are all quiet. So do I presume it is? Ah, OK. Eva, Eva. Uh if I hope I've got your name correctly, says no, it does not sound too complicated. So, well, uh, Maja also says that you have understood it well. Okay, I'm going to put one of my own questions to you. And my question is, can there be a review published without any studies selected? What do you think? So Costa thinks, well, Costa says no question mark. So you are unsure whether there can be a review if there are no studies on the subject. And uh, Mitya asked me if there are no studies on the subject. Yes, that is my question. There are no studies suitable for inclusion in a review. Can such a review ever be published? Maja says no. Any other? It would be a review of opinions. I mean, Urska makes this comment. Uh, sure, it could be a review of opinion, but it could also be a review of the fact that no studies exist. Is that not possible? Ivo says, true. I presume you mean, yes, it is possible that there could be a review published which factually confirms that there are no relevant studies. Do you think, but I, I presume you know that British Medical Journal or BMJ is one of the top journals in our specialty, right?
Do you think a big journal like the BMJ could be convinced by authors to publish a review that has zero studies? Uh, text taken from a paper published in the BMJ you can see the title it's talking about impact of signs and symptoms, diagnostic impact of signs and symptoms. Uh, and it's a systematic literature review. And here, if you look at the details of the search, which they have presented here in um, form of a table, they identified nearly 7,000 citations of which nearly 3,000 were duplicates or on other topics and were removed. And uh, after application of the various uh, criteria, in the end, they were left with just one citation. And as it turned out, out when they applied quality assessment to examine whether this study is worthwhile, the conclusion was that this study is methodologically not sound. So here you have it, a systematic review published in the BMJ with zero studies included. Uh, Mitya says, yes, it can be published if it is by well-known authors. Martina says, probably not, but maybe a specialized journal might be persuaded. Well, Martina, you can see that even a big journal can be persuaded. And do you know any of these authors? And how do you determine that an author is well known? Well, I'll leave you to think about, uh, about this. Um, and you, and Mitya has noted it very well that this was 2002. So it could be that in today's world, 20 years later, it may prove difficult. What, well, Mitya? If you are undertaking your own study and you need to justify that uh, your study has merit, it should be carried out, one of the justifications for carrying out a new study is to demonstrate that no previous such study exists and such a justification may be provided via carrying out a literature search which ultimately shows that ex studies do not exist or the ones they ex that exist have some weaknesses i guess my objective is to demonstrate to you that in an important research question If you use the correct methodology for framing the question and searching the literature, and if you find zero or very few studies, this is itself a worthwhile scientific exercise that can be taken forward for submission to a journal or be used for inclusion in justifying the need for a new study uh, 
which is normally written in the background section of a paper. Evo says, can we still call it a review or is it just a literature search yielding no true results? Well, I suppose the literature search did not yield any result is the correct, correct description. But in order to get to this stage, you had to go through the first two steps of a systematic review. So it, think about it. It is possible that somebody commenced a study. There are many such examples where following ethics approval, the study was started. The sample size requirement could never be met. Very few patients came forward. Just have a very small study. So this type of um, termination of a planned systematic review is similar to a small study that is the result of failure to recruit the required number of sample size. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the first 40 minute session. I'm happy to remind you that my idea here is that if I can help you prepare your review in such a way that when you submit it, it can be accepted in the first go, then I will be a happy teacher because my students uh, succeed in getting published. And one of the key steps in getting published involves writing the justification for your study or writing the justification for your review. So in order to show you some examples of how literature searches can be used to strengthen your, uh, your submission, I like to take you through um, some examples. So in the background section of any paper, the important things to write are the importance of the topic, the justification of your study, and your own hypothesis. So the hypothesis that you write in the objective of the abstract which covers the participants' intervention outcomes uh, of your framed question, along with the study design, all go into the third paragraph of the introduction section. The introduction section is not a book chapter. Uh, the expectation is that the introduction section will be no longer than one page of double spaced typing in the word file, i.e. no more than four or 500 words. It will have only two or three paragraphs. The third paragraph will be the description of your objective along with your study design. The background will include importance of the topic concerning disease prevalence, life quality, economic aspects, patient priority with respect to the topic you are covering. And I request you to consider citing these 
aspects of the topic backed with references that are systematic reviews. So for example, you look for a systematic review of disease prevalence and then just cite that reference in writing this first paragraph. And same applies to other aspects of importance of the topic. And then there is a question of why was your study undertaken? For this, you need to demonstrate that no such papers exist. And the previous example of the literature search that I showed you allows you to imagine in your head that if you had such a search to back your claim that no papers exist, Uh, we now have just a couple of minutes left. So in, uh, instead of going into detail, I'll suggest two other possible justifications. One justification is that the existing studies are of poor quality. And a final justification can be that good existing studies need repetition. Considering um, these three possible justifications, um, I remember at least a couple of questions from yesterday. Uh, one question concerned use of fluoride for prevention of caries. Another question concerned development of a mobile app for examining the outcome of breast reconstruction. And uh, there may be other questions that people have thought about since yesterday. Uh, my request is for you to undertake some searches on your topics over the next uh, 10 minutes or so. And then be prepared to talk about this when we return in order to highlight why your study is justified and that uh, this information will be useful to you in writing the background section. So with this, uh, we bring the first session to an end and we look forward to meeting again in about 20 minutes time. Thank you.